The basic primer has hopefully given you a good idea of how your brain works on a day-to-day -day basis and you're probably already seeing ways that you can improve its function by increasing the number of desirable neurotransmitters, for example, or by forming new connections by repeatedly performing two actions together that you want to become associated. But what can also help to a great degree is to understand what the brain was designed for and thereby why it is built the way it is. And this all comes down to evolutionary psychology. The most important thing to understand about your brain is that it's built for survival. And how do you survive? Well, by adapting to your environment. Every single aspect of your brain function is tied to this basic principle. And that means a lot of the way that your brain works can be predicted in different circumstances. At one point during the development of modern psychology, a field called behaviorism reigned. What this school of thought basically told us was that everything could be rote learned and that our entire subjective experience of the world was based on associations we formed through our interactions with the world. The most famous example of this principle in action was the study referred to as Pavlov's dogs. In this study, Ivan Pavlov rang a bell every single time he fed his dogs. Over time, he found that the dogs would develop a response to the sound of the bell. They would begin salivating even when there was no food present. This demonstrated that they learned through association and that the simple repetition was enough to form that association. Behaviorism says that everything we know is learned in this way. As babies, we are largely blank slates, although not entirely, and thus we learn how to interact with the world through association. For example, we learn that by reaching for things, we'll often be past them. Thus, we develop an understanding for the reaching gesture. When we touch fire, it causes a burning sensation, and the association that forms teaches us not to touch flames again. When we eat, it releases serotonin, and we learn that we like eating. We come to associate the smell of cookies with grandma's house and we learn language by seeing how people react to different words. On a neural level, we now know that this is all to do with neural plasticity. Once again, what fires together, wires together. And when something is very important, like the fire, dopamine and other neurotransmitters are released to make that memory form even faster. Our environment is always changing, so this is the best way for the brain to survive. By adapting to different environments, our brains ensure that the behaviours we acquire are perfectly suited to the environment we're in. Ultimately, we learn to avoid danger and gravitate towards food, sex and shelter. Why is this so important to understand? Because we're adapting to any situation we're put in. That means you're still adapting right now to working in an office, being constantly stressed and looking at your phone a lot. The connections you're not using are atrophying while many unhealthy behaviours continue to strengthen with time. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.